Hi everyone, this is Yvette here, and um, I haven't been on for a while, and there's reasons why. Like, I don't always like to post a lot of things all the time. I'm not a person that just uh, prophesies every day, or or I don't always get like constant word. I mean, I get words for me for the Lord, you know, but um, I'm not one to just constantly having to just put stuff on constantly. I, I, I get led by this Holy Spirit and he leads me and um, because I only speak what the Father wants to speak. He speaks through me. So I just want to say whoever's listening, God bless you. Um, it's a beautiful Friday afternoon and I just want to share something um, from the Bible. And uh, as I, op you know, as I was praying this morning and uh, the Lord put on my heart Ezekiel. And I believe it's going to line up with a lot of other things. I, you know, I don't ever listen to other people's prophecies either. It's very rare that I listen to other prophecies. I will listen to some. Um, uh, I'm not going to name names right now because I, you know, who I listen to once in a while. Because I want to get what I want to get from the Lord. Um, but I do listen to other prophetic people who, uh, who do prophesy and they, they get stuff from the Lord as well. Um, but as, as I was talking to my daughter earlier, she was, she was, uh, uh, saying that, you know, people are talking that we always talk about Jesus coming soon. And so I believe what the Lord gave me today ties into a lot of things, of course, what's going on in the world. And so what I'm going to read is Ezekiel. He gave me Ezekiel to, to read. And I started reading, you know, at the very beginning, the book of Ezekiel. And it's an awesome book. The whole Bible is. Um, and I'm just going to read uh, this first portion of it here. And, and, and just go with it. So, of course, this is from the Bible here. Um, chapter 1. On July 31st of my 30th year, while I was with the Judean exiles be beside the Kibar River in Babylon, the heavens were opened and I saw a vision of God. This happened during the fifth year of King Jehoshaphat's Jehoshin's captivity. The Lord gave this message to Ezekiel, son of Buzi, a priest beside the Kibar River in the land of the, Baloney, of the Babylonians, and he felt the hand of the Lord take hold of him. As I looked, I saw a great storm coming from the north, driving before it a huge cloud that flashed with lightning and shone with brilliant light. There was fire inside the cloud, and in the middle of the fire glowed something like gleaming amber. From the center of the cloud came four living beings that looked human, except that each had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight and their feet had hooves like those of a calf and shone like burnished bronze. Under each of their four wings, I could see human hands. So each of the four beings had four faces and four wings. The wings of each living being touched the wings of the beings beside it. Each one moved straight forward in any direction without turning around. Each had a human face in the front, the face of a lion on the right side, the face of an ox on the left side, and the face of an eagle at the back. Each had two pairs of outstretched wings. One pair stretched out to touch the wings of the living beings on either side of it, and the other pair covered its body. They went in whatever direction the spirit chose, and they moved straight forward in any direction without turning around. The living beings looked like bright coals of fire, or brilliant torches and lightning seemed to flash back and forth among them, and the living beings darted to and fro like flashes of lightning. As I looked at these beings, I saw four wheels touching the ground, Beside them, one wheel belonging to each. The wheels sparkled as if made of beryl. All four wheels looked alike and were made the same. Each wheel had a second wheel turning crosswise within it. The beans could move in and in any of the four directions they faced without turning as they moved. The rims of the four wheels were tall and frightening, and they were covered with eyes all around. When the living beans moved, the wheels moved with them. When they flew upward, the wheels went up too. The spirit of the living beings was in the wheels. So wherever the spirit went, the wheels and the living beings also went. When the 
beans moved, the wheels moved. When the beans stopped, the wheels stopped. When the beans flew upward, the wheels rose up. For the spirit of the living beans was in the wheels. Spread out above them was the surface like the sky, glittering like crystal. Beneath the surface, the wings of each living being stretched out to touch the other wings, and each had two wings covering its body. As they flew, their wings sounded to me like waves crashing against the shore, or like the voice of the Almighty, or like the shouting of a mighty army. When they stooped, stopped, they let down their wings. As they stood with wings lowered, a voice, a voice spoke from beyond the crystal surface above them. Above the surface was something that looked like a throne made of blue lapis lazul, and on this throne high above was a figure whose appearance resembled a man. From what appeared to be his waist up, he looked like gleaming amber, flickering like a fire, and from his waist down he looked like a burning flame, shining with splendor. All around him was a glowing halo, like a rainbow shining in the clouds on a rainy day. This is what the glory of the Lord looked like to me. When I saw it, I fell face down on the ground, and I heard someone's voice speaking to me. Ezekiel's Call and Commission Stand up, son of man, said the voice. I want to speak with you. The Spirit came into me as he spoke, and he set me on my feet. I listened carefully to his words. Son of man, he said, I am sending you to the nation of Israel, a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been rebelling against me this very day. They are a stubborn and hard-hearted people. But I am sending you to say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or refuse to listen, for remember, they are rebels at least. They will know they have had a prophet among them. Son of man, do not fear them or their words. Don't be afraid, even though their threats surround you like nettles and briars and stinging scorpions. Do not be dismayed by their dark scowls, even though they are rebels. You must give them my messages, whether they listen or not. But they won't listen, for they are completely rebellious. Son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not join them in their rebellion. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Then I looked and saw a hand reaching out to me. It held a scroll, which he unrolled, and I saw that both sides were covered with funeral songs, words of sorrow and pronouncements of doom. The voice said to me, Son of man, eat what I am giving you. Eat this scroll, then go and give its message to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he offered me the scroll. Fill your stomach with this, he said, and when I ate it, it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. Then he said, Son of man, go to the people of Israel and give them my messages. I am not sending you to a foreign people whose language you cannot understand. No, I am not sending you to people with strange and difficult speech. If I did, they would listen. But the people of Israel won't listen to you, and more than they listen to me, any more than they listen to me. For the whole lot of them are hard-hearted and stubborn. But look, I have made you an obstinate, a hard-hearted, and hard-hearted as they are. I have made your forehead as hard as the hardest rock, so don't be afraid of them or fear their angry looks, even though they are rebels. Then he added, Son of man, let all my words sink deep into your own heart. First listen to them carefully for yourself, then go to the people in exile and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Do this whether they listen to you or not. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard a loud rumbling sound behind me. May the glory of the Lord be praised in his place. It was the sound of the wings of the living beings as they brushed against each other and the rumbling of their wheels beneath them. The Spirit lifted me up and took me away. I went in bitterness and turmoil, but the Lord's hold on me was strong. Then I came to the colony of Judean exiles in Tel Aviv, beside the Keber River. I was overwhelmed and sat among them for seven days. Then it goes on to talk about he, to be a watchman you know, after seven days, uh, he gave another message to Ezekiel. Um, and he had appointed Ezekiel as a watchman on the wall. He's a watchman. And to warn people immediately. Um, um, and to warn the wicked, saying, you are under the penalty of death. Uh, but you failed to deliver the uh, to deliver the warning. They will die in their sins. So it's, he's saying to Ezekiel, 
you know, I have this warning and the warning that I'm giving to you, Ezekiel, and if, if you don't say this warning, then um, the people will die and it's on and the blood will be on your hands. But if you speak this warning and you pronounce it and say what I say to the people, then, the, you know, um, it says here, they will die in their sins and I will hold you responsible for their deaths. If you warn them and they refuse to repent and keep on sinning, they will die in their sins. But you will have saved yourself because you obeyed me. And he's talking about if righteous people turn away from their righteous behavior and ignore any obstacles put in their way, they will die. And if you do not warn them, they will die in their sins. So as I'm reading and, you know, I've read Ezekiel before. I love the Bible. I love Ezekiel, reading Ezekiel. Um, and then the Lord talks about a sign of the coming siege and about sins. And I know in, in, in the Old Testament here in Ezekiel, he's talking about Israel and how Israel had sinned and um, they have idols and um, they, they are not obeying the word of the Lord. And so what the Lord had given me is that it, this is what's going on in our country right now in our country. There is so much sin. There's a lot of idolatry and and, and there's a lot of watchmen on the wall who is saying right now, you know, uh, repent and come turn around and come to the Lord. And there are going to be people who are not going to want to turn around and come to the Lord um, because they're going to stay rebellious and they want to, they're staying in their sin. And, and so what I'm doing because I started reading this and the Lord really convicted me hard and said, you're going to read this. You're going to read Ezekiel to them. And you're going to read and you're going to warn the people. You're going to warn this nation because this is like he says earlier when he's talking to Ezekiel about a language. It's not like I'm talking to foreign people where I'm going to talk to the people who understand this language. The language of God. And God, right now, God is really, I feel the fire in me. And I, I strongly believe that the Lord is saying, this is what's going to happen if you do not repent. Um, he also talks about that there will be, you know, that um, it says here, a sign of the coming judgment. And... Um, Oh, and, and, and the, the coming judgment is going to be where there is going to be famine. And, and it says that, um, oh, let's see. I'm just, I'm kind of just skimming this and reading here, um, it says here, I'll just go down here because it says here, a sign of the coming judgment. And he's telling him to sharp his sword and use it as a razor to shave his head and, and to use a scale to weight the hair into three equal parts. And this is interesting because the Lord is telling him, Ezekiel, to shave off his hair and to get his, his hair and, and put him into three equal parts. And this is interesting. There's a reason why he wants to do that. He's saying, use a scale to weigh the hair into three equal parts. Place a third of it at the center of your map. So he's got this map of Jerusalem. And, and so the Lord has this map of the United States. And he's saying to, um, um, after acting out the siege, burn it there, scatter another third across your map and chop it with the sword, scatter the last third to the wind for I will scatter my people with the sword. Keep just a bit of the hair and tie it up, um, in your robe. Then take some of these hairs out and throw them into the fire, burning them up. A fire will then spread from this remnant and destroy all of Israel. But I believe he's talking to the United States. This is what I'm getting. This is what the sovereign Lord says. This is an illustration of what will happen to, it says Jerusalem, but I'm going to say United States. This is what will happen to the United States. I placed her at the center of the nations. Well, Jerusalem is still the center of the nations, but he placed the United States where right now we are a center of the, all the nations right now. 
we we are known to have freedom. We are known to have many and plentiful things. We are, people want to come here left and right and be free. Um, but she has rebelled against my regulations and decrees and has been even more wicked than the surrounding nations. Ouch on that. She refused to obey the regulations and decrees I gave her to follow. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You people have behaved worse than your neighbors and have refused to obey my decrees and regulations. You have not even lived up to the standards of the nations around you. Therefore, I myself, the sovereign Lord, and now your enemy, I will punish you publicly while all the nations watch. Because of your detestable idols, I will punish you like I have never punished anyone before or ever will again. Parents will eat their own children, and children will eat their parents. I will punish you and scatter, scatter to the winds of you who, the few who survive. As surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, I will cut you off completely. I will show you no pity at all because you have defiled my temple with your vile images and detestable sins. A third of your people will die in the city from disease and famine. A third of them will be slaughtered by the enemy outside the city walls, and I will scatter a third to the winds, chasing them with my sword. Then at last my anger will be spent, and I will be satisfied. And when my fury against them has subsided, um, all Israel will know that I, the Lord, has spoken to them in my jealous anger. So, and then it goes on to the mountains, judgments against Israel, are the Israel mountains. But this, this is really harsh because I know now this is Old Testament. And I know that the Lord, we, we are saved by grace that everybody talks about. And I get that. I understand all that. And if some of you are just um, listening to this and, and you're new, a new Christian or you really don't understand the Bible, you got to get this in the spirit. Um, God is God in the Old Testament. Everybody says he was an angry God. He was, you know, but there if you really read and dig deep in the Old Testament and everything foreshadows Jesus Christ in the new. So, yes, everything's new with when Jesus when Jesus Christ comes. But. What's going on right now is the Lord, you hear it all the time. He is coming soon. He's coming soon. And I hear that from him a lot. I hear it in my spirit. I'm coming soon. And I'm like, soon, what is soon, God? Like, what is soon? <laughs> You're coming soon. He can come right now as I'm speaking. He can come anytime. We don't know the hour or, or day. But one thing that we do need to do is we need to turn around as a nation. We need to turn around and face our Father God. And we have to pray and as I'm reading Ezekiel 2, as I'm going further down, it's not just about praying because it talks about here that even though all this is going to happen, what's going on with Israel. And he's also talking about like, even though you're praying and you've got certain people praying who are in the church praying. They really haven't accounted for their sins. They really haven't said, forgive me, Lord, for this sin. There is a lot of people in the church. And I, this is going to, this is not even hard for me to say, because I just got to say it. The Lord, the, the Lord has really pressed this on me that there are people in, in all in, in, in the church who are saying, yeah, I'm praying for, I'm in, a, I'm in agreement to pray for this, this and that, for our nation to come back, for for things to change, for the Lord to jump in and for, you know, turn around and, you know, um, for, we're praying for our, the, uh, for Biden and, and Harris, we're praying for everybody, but the Lord in this is saying, you, you're praying for me to do a turnaround to fight the enemy, but yet you're still in your sin. You're still, you're still doing that sin. You're committing idolatry. There's, a lot of um, uh, pornography, you're dealing with affairs, you're dealing with lies, lust, Jezebel spirits, cursing, witchcraft in the church. And so the Lord is saying, you know, he hears prayers. Don't get me wrong. He will hear our prayers. He will hear your prayer. But when Ezekiel's talking here and what he's saying in Ezekiel is there are some of you that are just, if you want to change a nation, if you want your nation to change, and, and you want the Lord and his angel armies to come down and change everything. 
you got to get right in your heart before you come to the throne root of God and say, I need this change in this, but I'm still doing this, this, and this. He knows our sins. And yes, we're not perfect. And he knows that. But if, if, if you, if you say, Lord, you know, I have this problem, Lord, I need you to help me work through this. And I keep struggling with it. He's understanding of that. And he's like, okay, I'm going to help you. Of course you're in alignment with those prayers. But if you're sitting there as a Christian, as a person, and, and if you're an intercessor, Yes, I'm going to throw that out, intercessors. If you're an intercessor, especially an intercessor, and you're sinning still, and you haven't really repented, which you should, and get right with the Lord, how are your prayers, how are those prayers going to be heard? How how are we going to have breakthrough? And then here we've got people in our churches that is like people are getting, you know beat down by the enemy there there's churches that like we we we've got the main thing is we have to account for our sins we have to say we're sorry and repent and turn around and sometimes there's struggles i've had struggles too with stuff that i was dealing with and i'm like i don't know if i could do this lord but you know what you're with me in it and yes i've fallen back and but you know what i got right back on and i said okay lord and now the more i'm reading my word the more i'm spending time with him the easier it's getting the i that sin is gone because he's in me because jesus christ is in me so there's going to be a famine He's talking about famine. He's talking about, we're going to get hungry here. We're, so what I'm saying here as well is get prepared, get food. I'm not saying doing it out of fear because he's our provider. I know he's going to provide for me no matter what, but there's nothing wrong with wisdom. So in all of Ezekiel, it talks that he's talking about what's going to happen. There's going to be a, you know, famine and everything going on because of our pagan shrines and we have and he talks about the mountains where they put them on the mountains and everything and then he's good he talks about the coming of the end in chapter seven um it says the end is here wherever you look east west north or south your land is finished no hope remains for i will unleash my anger against you i will call you to account for all your detestable sins i will turn my eyes away and show no pity i will repay you for all your detestable sins then you will know that i am the lord this is what the sovereign lord says disaster after disaster get that disaster after disaster is coming your way the end has come it has finally arrived your final doom is waiting oh people of israel the day of your destruction is dawning the time has come the day of trouble is near shouts of anguish will be heard on the mountains no shouts of joy soon i will pour out my fury on you and unleash my anger against you i will call you to account for all your detestable sins. I will turn my eyes away and show you no pity. I will repay you for all your detestable sins. Then you will know that it is I, the Lord, who is striking the blow. The day of judgment is here. Your destruction awaits. The people's wickedness and pride have blossomed to full flower. So this part here, what he's saying, the people's wickedness, um, and pride have blossomed to full flower. That means, it says right here, their violence has grown into a rod that will beat, the, beat them for their wickedness. The violence has grown into a rod. Violence has gotten so high in our nation, it's, it's crazy because we want to get rid of policemen and, we, and people are just shooting each other. Left, we're killing. It's gone crazy here in this nation. Um, None of these proud and wicked people will survive. All their wealth and prestige will be swept away. Yes, the time has come. The day is, is here. Buyers should not rejoice over bargains, nor sellers grieve over losses, for all of them will fall under my terrible anger. Even if the merchants survive, merchants survive, they will never return to their business for what God has said applies to everyone. It will not be changed. No one person whose life is twisted by sin will ever recover. And guess what's going on? We've got this COVID plague going on or, you know, we've got it going on and people have lost their businesses and they can't recover. And, you know, I'm not saying that 
there are some Christians whose businesses have gone down and they still haven't recovered. So it's, it's it, he's talking about everybody here. He's just not talking, you know, he's talking the wicked. Okay. And I'm not saying every Christian's wicked and I'm not saying I don't, I'm not judging. This is what I'm getting from Ezekiel. This is what I'm getting from the Lord. And I'm really, I'm really strong about this. It's like burning right here to speak this. This is not easy for me, but I'm doing it. So, but I'm reading right out of the Bible, but he's talking about the United States. So as for, as for this, he keeps going on and he's talking about how, you know, we had, we, you know, he, he will break down their proud fortresses and defile their sanctuaries. Terror and trembling will overcome my people. There is idolatry in the temple. He talks about. Um, then on the September 17th, during the sixth year of King Jehoshaphat's captivity, while the leaders of Judah were in my home, the sovereign Lord took hold on me. I saw a figure that appeared to be a man from what appeared to be his waist down. He looked like a burning flame from the waist up. He looked like gleaming amber. He reached out what seemed to be a hand and took me by the hair. The spirit lifted me up into the sky and transported me to Jerusalem in a vision from God. I was taken to the north gate of the inner courtyard of the temple where there is a large idol that has made the Lord very jealous. Suddenly the glory of the Lord of Israel was there just as I had seen it before the valley. So we have placed a large idol in our temple. And I'm just not thinking, I'm not, I, thank you, Lord. I'm not just getting the temple where you go to church. We're placing this, your body is the temple of the Lord, okay? Your body is a temple of the Lord. And he's saying here, beside the entrance to the gate near the altar stood the idol that has made the Lord so jealous. What idol do you have in your temple that you put before the altar of God? That you have you we, we what idol do you have in your temple that you put in front of the altar of god needs to go needs to get out got to get it out got to let it go got to got to tell it goodbye and keep it and, and repent and say i'm sorry lord for this idol because some of us are holding on to idols and it's gotten it's gotten to the point where that idol is bigger it's a big big idol in front of our temple in front of the altar of god and you're wondering why nothing's happening you're wondering why okay i'm praying lord i'm praying lord nation's not changing nothing's going on get rid of the idol how can he how can god move forward because he's not a double-minded god we are we're the ones who have idols we're i mean he does his part we obey him we honor and worship him so we got to get that idol out. Whatever idol you have, whatever it is, get it out of your temple. Get it out. He talks about uh, adulterers, you know. He's talking about um, talking about adulterers and how the glory of the Lord leaves the Lord the Lord's glory leaves the temple. So. Do you want the Lord to leave your temple? And do we want the Lord to leave our nation? Do we want the Lord to leave our churches? Do we really want that? No, we don't. We need to get right as a nation. And in order for this nation to get right, the ones who are the remnant, who love the Lord, don't have idols in their temple. Praying. In one unity and perfect alignment with the Lord. He's a jealous God. Yes, he is. And a lot of people have a hard time uh, thinking about that. Like, he shouldn't be jealous. You know, he's, he's almighty God. Yeah, he's jealous for you. He's jealous for you and your soul. He is jealous for you. He made you. He's jealous for you. He loves you. It's not a jealous out of hate. It's a jealous as I'm jealous for you. I made you in my image and the enemy's taking that and distorting it and you're worshiping idols and you got this big idol now in front, like open your eyes. This is what the Lord is saying. Open your eyes, nation, open your eyes, people, open your eyes in the church, people, open your eyes, get your eyes opened. 
take the veil off and open your eyes to what's really going on in order for things to happen up there in the spirit realm we got to make it happen down here he he doesn't need us but in order for us to break anything off in order for us to really grow and learn in the lord in order for us to make changes here on this earth especially in this nation we need to get right with ourselves we can't have idols sitting in our temple we can't be thinking of things that are not godly we have to get right with the lord in order to move forward, in order to move forward, because he will leave. There's, there's time. There's, he will leave. He will not be in your church. He will not be in you. He will leave. Like you make a choice. You want sin in your life, and you want to keep that idol. There, he's got. Who's gonna go? You want Jesus in your life. You want. You want to make it right in your own temple. Put Jesus first. Get rid of everything, and the enemy will flee. So, so what I'm, 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 I'm speaking here is, and, and there's more to read. There is, there is a good light at the end of the tunnel because it also talks about, uh, judgment against false prophets, um, adultery of leaders. It says Israel's leaders, but we're talking about um, that that the people of Israel have set up idols in their hearts and fallen into sin. They go to a prophet asking for a message, so I, the Lord, will give them the kind of answer their great idolatry deserves. I will do this to capture their minds and hearts to all my people who have turned from me to worship their detestable idols. Idols. Therefore, the Lord is saying, repent and turn away from your idols and stop all your detestable sins. I, the Lord, will answer all those both Israelites and foreigners who reject me and set up idols in their hearts and so fall into sin. And who then come to a prophet asking for my advice? So it, it talks a lot about judgment here. And it talks about our nation being an unfaithful wife. And... Um, so what we need to do is we really need to get right with ourselves. We need to get right with God. We need to, we need to get right with, um, with, with the Lord period. And so your body is the temple of the Lord. And I know some people have a hard time with getting right with God and I get it, but our nation is literally, I, I'm, I'm getting right now, I see, I see a vision right now. Uh, we're at a standstill. I see our nation and it, it's like we're at a standstill. And I see where, where there is one side here and there's another side. And I see right now that Angel Armies is just waiting and I see the enemy on this side who's waiting. And these guys can't move because, because, because the Lord cannot actually tell them to move because we as people in this nation have so much violence and crime and sin and worshiping these idols that he can't move. Now there are the remnant, there are a remnant of intercessors. There are a remnant of people who are praying day and night and night and day and saying, Lord, move your hand, save our nation. Yes. And he listens to that. But when you got so many others who know of Jesus Christ, who come to church and sit down and then leave, and then on the weekdays they do what they please, and they're hiding their sins. This is a year, like, this 2022, I don't know much about numbers or anything, but I know that two and two, they're both equal. 
two and two. It's not a two and one. It's like they're both two and two. They're not odd numbers or even. And so what he's saying is, woo, thank you, Jesus. The Lord is saying two and two is equal. And he wants to be two and two with you. He wants to be equal with, he wants to be not equal because we can't be equal with God because he's God. He's God Almighty. He's more powerful than us. But he wants us to be united with him. He wants us to be in alignment with him. Not just equal because he's bigger than us. He wants us to be united in unity with him. God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy, Holy Spirit. He wants us to be in, united with him. And there's no way we can be united with him if we're sinning, if we got a big idol in our temple in front of the altar. And when you're going up there to pray or whatever and you still have that idol, he has to turn away from that, honestly. he, You know, the fear of the Lord, I don't really think, really no one knows the fear of the Lord. And you got to have the fear of the Lord. You've got to get that. you got to get that. It's not about fear in here. It's the fear in here in your spirit, the fear of the Lord. So this is what the Lord gave me. And if you want change, you got you to gotta start with yourself. And I pray that people will have a conviction in their heart. Anyone who is a Christian and is seasoned or has been walking for a year or longer than six months, and you still got that idol, and you're trying, and you're sitting there just saying, oh, why hasn't it changed? And, you know, I'm praying to God and everything. Well, get that idol out. Get rid of it. Because it's you got it right in front of the altar. I feel him so strongly right now. I feel his heart. I really do. And he loves us. Don't get me wrong. He's not just, a, he's a God, he's a father. And he has to discipline us just like fathers do here on earth. He has to discipline us. And he's, he's given us another chance. He's saying, repent, get rid of your idols. You got them all over. We have idols all over in this nation right now. Violence has gone up. We need to have order. And God is not a God of chaos. God is about order. Yes, authority. We should obey authority figures. We should. We should. But he's talking about your sanctuary here. Your temple, your sanctuary. And if we need things to move in the spirit, we got to, we got to get right here. And he's saying people get right. It says it in Ezekiel. It says it right here, Ezekiel. Ezekiel is just full of like, oh my goodness, he's just, he's just straightforward. And so sometimes God has to sit you down and say, I got to be straight up with you. I got to be straight up with you, brother. I got to be straight up with you, sister. I got to be straight up with the church. This is how it is. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to change? The only way we can change is with God. We got to truly repent and we got to change. And then you'll see how things will shift and turn around. We have, we have to do what's right in the sight of the Lord. We can't hide anything. He knows everything. He knows everything. He knows everything. So what I want to say to everybody here that's listening. That I pray that any rebellion any rebellious spirit, anybody who's battling anything in their life that has become an idol to them or they're battling. I pray that the Lord removes it from you. I pray that this 
uh, helped you in some way. Um, read Ezekiel. You know, I haven't finished reading all of it. I just read some of it, but he wanted to, me to read some of it. Um, and to let you know that there is restoration in it. Um, the theme of, of Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, it's about destruction of Jerusalem. But I'm saying destruction of our nation. Because no matter what we try to do, we're under him. Okay, the government is under God. Not the other way around. God is not under the government. God is not under anybody. Although they want to make it seem like that. But the government is on his shoulders. He's carrying us. And so the government has to do something about it. We, as a nation, have to do something about it with ourselves first. We have to get right with ourselves. So it says destruction of Jerusalem and its restoration, because there will be restoration. Anytime there is a, a great fall, there has to be a, a restoration. Anything that happens with the Lord, even in our bodies, we need complete restoration in our bodies as well. So there is restoration. The key words of Ezekiel are judgment, blessing, individual moral responsibility. Get that. Individual moral responsibility. Judgment, blessing, individual moral responsibility. That everybody has a moral responsibility in their selves because you have your own moral responsibility to do to repent, to do what's right, to get cast out them idols. It, it, you. Because one day you're going to face the Lord and it's going to be him and it's going to be you, nobody else. So he's saying you need, your, you need to get right with yourself in order to do and pray what you need to pray into the spirit so they can move, so they can change a shift. We want to shift. We we cry out to the all living God. But are we really crying out of like poor me? Or are we crying out to say, I already I'm crying out, but I already know you're gonna do it. And I just thank you, Lord, for showing people that they have stuff that needs to be taken out. They're idols. They're whole just that you gotta get rid of the idols. In your life, you got to get rid of that big idol. Whoever I'm talking to, you have a big idol in front of you. Get it away, tear it down from the altar of Christ because it's blocking God, that idol. And God has to turn away because you got that idol in you. Get it out, get it out. So this is this is pretty pretty. Pretty interesting Bible here. I mean, book of e Ezekiel. And um, I just pray that um, that the Lord will hear the remnant and hear, hear the people and um, that he that this nation will be forgiven. I also want to bring up that Ezekiel was very, he was the first, he was the first person that was called charismatic. And so that's where you hear charismatic church, churches, you know, um, that he was, um, um, he was very charismatic. It says here in his, um, his Ezekiel's personality reflects a mystical strain, the immediacy of his contract with the uh, contact with the spirit his visions and the frequency with which the word of the lord came to him provide a connection between the older ecstatic prophets and the classical writing prophets his spiritual experiences also anticipated the activity of the holy spirit in the new testament to him rightly belongs the title charismatic and then it also talks about trees and it talks about a, a cedar you know and and it also says um I wrote down messianic kingdom, birds and trees represent Gentile nations to show Christ's uh, universal reign. And so um, he's speaking to this Gentile nation here. The Gentile nation needs to, needs to get rid of them idols. 
and you probably heard it for a while, and, and but get rid of them. We need to get rid of them now in order to move into what we need to move into. As for what I said about getting, you know, getting prepared and have water and stuff, you should always be prepared anyway. You should have something on hand for, for any kind of emergency. Um, like I said, I, I, you know, I know the Lord is my provider, and I know that he has provided for me and my husband um, when we both were sick and couldn't work. Um, we've had all our bills, bills paid. He's, he's the great provider. He's the great I am. Um, but we do want to have, make sure that we have things in place, you know, Things happen in this in this world because this is a fallen world, um, and we have things in place. So I'm not causing fear, but what I am saying is, y'all need to get right with Jesus. You all, y'all, um, everyone needs to get right with Jesus. And you know, if you are not, if you don't know Jesus Christ, and you're listening to this, and and you're saying, you know, what do I need to do? You know, um, all you need to do is just. Say, Lord, I repent of my sins. I ask that you come into my life. I believe that you are uh, the Lord, Jesus Christ who uh, came here and died for my sins and rose up again. Forgive me, Lord, that you are my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. And then I highly suggest after that that you find a church. I highly suggest you start reading your word because you need to get an infilling of the word. You need to start putting stuff into your body. Feed yourself the word of God. Um, and I suggest that you get baptized. And not just baptized. Get baptized in the Holy Spirit so you can speak in tongues because that is powerful and i know that there are some of you christians that don't believe in that but that's not what this word says and some of you i don't want to go into something else but all i'm saying is if you're a brand new christian um, continue to read the word um, continue to love jesus and to turn away from the enemy because he is about to try to do something and you know what the remnant will stop it God still hears prayers, but in order for us to really shift and change this nation, we need to shift and change ourselves. All right, so there is my rant for the day. And um, now that I got it off and I obeyed the Lord and said what I had to say, um, take it as you will. Um, I just know that he, I love him and... Um, I love how he speaks to his people, and um, I just I just say I love you all. Be be bold and strong in the Lord. Do not shrink back, and um, we're not perfect, and Jesus knows that, and and that's why he's saying get right with him. Ask for forgiveness of your sins. Truly ask him to come into your heart and forgive your sins and take out those idols and get rid of the idol that is in front of the altar in your temple. Love you all. Have a blessed day. I think I put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs>